It's been the final scheduled week of Chandrayaan 3's history making journey to the moon, but as we say good night, sweet prince, to one epic mission, another takes flight with the launch of Aditya L1, India's mission to explore the sun. So is this the end of Chandrayaan 3 and what's to come from Aditya? Stick around and let's find out. Since that history-making landing near the lunar south pole on August 23rd, Chandrayaan-3 has continued to amaze the world, not just with the general performance of Vikram and Pragyan, but also of the scientific experiment results already ma being made visible, thanks to the efforts of ISRO and their public communications team. Really, the comms team at ISRO have done such a fantastic job with their daily updates, and it's a testament to their efforts to share this mission with us all. You see, a lot of spaceflight companies can take a leaf from their book because it shows just what good public relations can do, and the whole world has been fascinated by India's achievements so far. But this has been the final scheduled week for Vikram and Pragyan on the surface of the moon, before lunar night descends upon them, and there's plenty to catch up on since my last video. On August the 31st, the ILSA payload on Vikram was announced to have successfully recorded lunar seismic activity, first from the movements of Pragyan, and then, rather unexpectedly, a second event which appears to have been naturally occurring. We can see in this blue graph here the various movements of Pragyan as it travelled away from Vikram, with the biggest acceleration differential coming at 2,300 seconds, where a spike between 0 0.014 and 0 0.023 metres per second was recorded. Overall though, it's fairly consistent and looks like a normal recording of something like sound waves, perhaps noticeable for musicians or recording engineers. Albeit, it's not the sound that's recorded, rather vibrations which are picked up on an electrode covered spring within the probe, and the resulting change in capacitance is converted into voltage. So what you're seeing is a voltage difference over time. Still, apart from a few peaks, everything appears consistent. If we then compare that to the red graph, we can see that this appears to be a singular event, with a sudden upsurge in recorded vibration acceleration between 0.1195 and 0.118 meters per second squared over roughly three and a half seconds. The cause of this event is still under investigation, but ILSA's main objective was to measure ground vibrations caused by quakes, impacts, and artificial events. So, was this a moon quake? Was it a meteorite crashing into the moon? Well, the difference in recorded acceleration compared with Pragyan's movements suggests a high energy event, so a meteorite impact wouldn't be out of the question here. But it wasn't just ILSA having all the fun, because the RAMBA probe, uh, which is a Langmuir probe, also made the first ever recorded measurements of near-surface plasma at the lunar south pole region. The first indications are that near-surface plasma at the Shiv Shakti point is fairly sparse, with a density ranging from 5 to 30 million electrons per cubic metre. Further results will help scientists to better understand fluctuations in solar weather conditions and help to pinpoint which areas of the lunar south pole are best placed for maximum solar energy capture. One of the most exciting discoveries though was the detection of sulphur within the lunar soil, both by the LIBS and the APXS experiment. These experiments are studying the meteorological composition of the lunar soil, and whilst the majority of the major elements such as aluminium and silicon, calcium and iron have been confirmed, the discovery of minor elements such as sulphur raises some really interesting questions, including one from way back during the Apollo program. Was the moon once volcanically active? Sulfur is an abundant byproduct of volcanic activity, and scientists have been long looking for evidence or further evidence of the moon's ancient past, particularly after Apollo 17's discovery of orange Taurus littoral uh, soil. That came in the form of these little orange glass beads and are a direct result of volcanic activity. 
with sulfur, this can be turned into a wide variety of products uh, used in battery production, fertilizers, refining, and helping to extract other minerals. Not only that, but if fighting broke out on the moon and there was a dispute over territory, then you could use the sulfur to form a very crude gunpowder. It's also handy for treating a variety of skin conditions such as acne. So uh, lunar sulfur cream anyone? So yes, sulfur is actually a huge industry here on terra firma. So with the discovery of this important element, it gives a huge boost to hopes of establishing bases at this region of the moon in the future. But on September the 2nd, with Pragyan having traveled over 100 meters from Vikram, it was time to park up in a safe position next to the lander, turn the solar panel to face where the most sunlight will be at lunar sunrise and prepare for sleep. A few days later, it was Vikram's turn, but not before another quick experiment. Could Vikram power up its little engines and perform a short hop? Well, with the ramp and instruments stowed, Vikram fired its engines and elevated itself to around 40 centimeters above the lunar surface and hopped over to a spot 40 centimeters away, where it once again landed softly and safely. So yeah, chalk that up. Two soft landings on the surface of the moon for Vikram for your one shot. This was actually a key test though, designed to ensure that future missions using the same engines or very similar engines will be able to refire and ascend from the surface, which is particularly handy for sample return and for future human missions. But after yet another success, Vikram powered down and entered sleep mode in preparation for the long lunar night. Remember, both Vikram and Pragyan are powered by solar-powered batteries. These are responsible for all power generation on the spacecraft, including heating elements. With lunar nighttime temperatures hitting a chilly minus 130 degrees Celsius and no sunlight, Vikram and Pragyan can't operate in lunar darkness. The hope is that by preserving what battery power remains, keeping the receivers active and placing them in the best position possible, there may be a chance to reconnect with the lander and rover when the sun rises again on September the 22nd. Now, this is by no means guaranteed as there is a very real possibility of a deep freeze setting in to the batteries and the spacecraft in general. But I get the feeling that if any mission is gonna pull off a successful hibernation, then it's gonna be Chandrayaan-3 with Vikram and Pragyan. Even if they don't wake up, you know, this mission was only designed to last one lunar day. And with the data already collected, it's gonna be studied for years and years to come. And I'd say that this mission has already been a resounding success. If they do wake up, that will just be the sugar coating on top of an already well-decorated cake. Needless to say, we'll be watching and waiting with bated breath to see what happens on September the 22nd. Will they awake from their deep sleep? Well, it's anybody's guess, but fingers crossed. Now, if that wasn't enough excitement, as we say goodnight to Vikram and Pragyan, India have also launched Aditya L1. This is their first deep space probe to explore the sun from way out at Lagrange Point 1 and it successfully lifted off on September the 3rd on board a PSLV heavy version from Satish Dhawan and it's already begun its series of gravity assists to increase its orbit from the Earth. Using Hohmann transfer principles, Aditya will raise its apogee with each orbital pass, gaining velocity during the descent towards perigee and assisting with each orbit raising engine burn. Fans of Kerbal Space Program will know this maneuver all too well as it saves a tremendous amount of fuel required to raise an object's orbit from the Earth. Think of it like a series of slingshot maneuvers and it's pretty much what Chandrayaan-3 used to propel itself towards the moon. Aditya will make about four apogee raising transfers before the final slingshot steers it clear of Earth's sphere of influence. And it'll take a couple of months to travel to L1, some 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. Still, Lagrange Point 1 or L1 really is the best place to carry out solar observations as it affords an uninterrupted view of the sun. And this should yield some really, really great results. 
India's next scheduled mission is the X-ray polarimeter satellite, a low Earth orbit observatory designed to study the polarization of cosmic X-rays. It's due to launch before the end of 2023 and has a tentative date of somewhere around mid-December. But we'll have to see because the head of ISRO was recently quoted as saying that they have a number of missions ready to go. And this also includes further work on the Gaganyan human spaceflight system, with the crew escape system designed to undergo its next series of tests in mid-October. So there you have it, and I've absolutely loved covering Chandrayaan 3's epic lunar voyage. I really hope that this isn't the last we've heard of Vikram and Pragyan. And do remember, we also still have the propulsion stage that's still in orbit around the moon, and it'll carry on making observations. So yeah, set your calendars. September the 22nd is the date to watch out for. Will Vikram and Pragyan wake up? Yeah, we'll just have to wait and find out. So yeah, a job well done to everybody at ISRO and everybody connected with Chandrayaan 3. I think this has been a mission for the history books and one that really has captured the world's attention. But I'll be continuing to cover future Indian spaceflight missions as I turn my attentions back westwards and back to the UK for my next video. Let me know your thoughts as always in the comments below and if you did enjoy the video, drop a little like. Consider subscribing and if you really want to, you can support me on Patreon. A massive, massive shout out to all my Patreon community members. As always, I really do appreciate your support each and every single time. And I want to say a massive welcome to everybody that's recently subscribed and joined me here on this channel. So, as ever, stick around for future space news updates, both from the UK, India, Europe and beyond. Thank you ever so much for watching. I've been Tom June, and I'll see you next time.